Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedali still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On Daybreak with Pedali and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. us. Tonight's inter-island vessel refuses services until subsidies are paid. Let those pyrosis cases on the rise in Vanua Levu. And over $9 million spent on more than development program. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade and you're watching FBC News. Seaview Shipping has stopped services to Lao and Rotuma until it's paid subsidies owed for the last five months. Lao hasn't had any services for two months after the MV Sandy suffered mechanical problems. Vessel owners now refuse to sail the franchise route until they're paid. Apisalami Bukau reports. Seaview Shipping says it won't be providing any more services to Lao and Rotuma unless government pay its debt. The major issue is that we cannot move the vessel at the moment because uh, since last five years, I'm sorry, uh, five months, uh, pardon me, last five months we haven't uh, get paid from the government under the franchise scheme. Prasad says his boat, the MV Lady Sandy, is having mechanical problems and they need money to get back on the water. Into this statement we have submitted to the government, um, they owe us almost $185,000 till today. I want to reassure my good friend uh, Durga that uh, he'll receive his money. Uh, we beg his patience. Uh, and understanding uh, due to the fact that there's processes and systems that we have to follow. Uh, there's uh, a dire need to improve in this area. Prasad says they have been requesting payment for some times now, but haven't heard back from the government shipping franchise. Well, everybody is aware, franchise department is aware, but the thing is that we have been following up for the payment. They said this week, next week, this week, next week, that is the thing is going on for quite a while. As you are aware, Government had made the decision for the transfer of the Fiji shipping uh, franchise scheme uh, that was previously managed uh, by the Fiji Navy and government shipping services uh, over to the Ministry of Transport, Works and uh, Public Utilities. I'm happy to report that we were just uh, concluded the handover process uh, as of last month. However, until all issues are sorted, the MV Sandy will remain berthed in the Suva Harbour. I have made my decision. Unless until the payment is made, I'm not going to move the boat. Commander King has assured the payment will be made in a couple of days. Apisolome Doka, FBC News. The Reserve Bank of Fiji transferred $35.4 million to the government today. This compromises its profit of $25.4 million, along with $10 million from the revaluation reserve account. The RBF board decided not to set aside any profit to general reserves, but instead transferred the full amount to the government. RBF Governor Barry Whiteside says its 2012 financial performance is a significant achievement when one takes into account the adverse global investment environment where interest rates are relatively low. Fiji's foreign reserve level was $1.6 billion at the end of 2012. 20 cases of leptospirosis have been reported in the Northern Division with an unconfirmed number of deaths. Once again, the Health Ministry is warning people to be careful with the drinking water or when going into rivers and streams. Chanel Sivan reports. The Ministry of Health is now monitoring remote villages in three provinces in Vanualevu. Uh, there has been few deaths um, uh, from leptospirosis in Northern Division. And uh, we are closely monitoring uh, Bua, Madwata and the Kandrove areas. Uh, from January to March, uh, there were 20 cases of leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is transmitted when people drink or come into contact with water that has been contaminated by animal urine or feces. If you drink even contaminated water, water which has been uh, infected by the urine of infected animals, you, there's a high chance of you also getting um, uh, leptospirosis. And... Uh, uh, children should be uh, uh, taken more care of because um, we have noticed that children sometimes are left alone. They go bathing and swimming in the rivers and streams. There's a great danger. 
Bill says there are reports of some casualties from leptospirosis. However, exact numbers are yet to be confirmed because people often do not come to the hospitals. Officials are now making daily visits to villages which are most at risk from the disease. People are also urged to seek urgent medical attention if they feel body aches or fever. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has asked the public for their support by participating in the constitutional process. Submissions are open until the 26th of this month, and he says Fijians shouldn't let this opportunity pass them by. Christopher Chand reports. The Prime Minister was in Lotoka today, opening a water project. But more important national issues were on his mind. Let me ask for your support. People show their love of country by exercising their rights, participating in the country's important events. We have an important event going on right now, the adoption of a new constitution. The public consultations and the deadline for feedback on the draft constitution has been extended by about three weeks. All Fijians have the right to help us chart our future. It is important that you read it, understand it, and share your view, your point of view, with the government. This draft constitution is a new beginning. Meanwhile, Seniyaya settlement at Lovu now receives clean drinking water for the first time. A uh, proper subdivision needs uh, modern infrastructure. And of course, that means water. Water first and foremost. So today, we begin a new era in a community. Access to clean drinking water is covered as a socio-economic right in the draft constitution. Christopher Chand, FBC News. After the break, Suva's special school marks World Autism Day. You can join us on The Breakfast Show every weekday from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. right here on Today FM. That's right. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. When Cyclone Evan tore through Fiji, Castaway Island suffered close to $8 million in damage. Now, three months later, it's back on its feet and back in business. Christopher Chand reports. It's only one of six resorts to bounce back from Cyclone Evan. The dedication to the resort and of course the dedication to the employer and also to their jobs and um, worked hard to get this resort open in three months time. Some of the other resorts, there's a couple around, they're still uh, to open. Um, hopefully they'll come on stream very soon. To have the island getaway open within three months is no minor feat. Sustained damage. Uh, insurable damage to the tune of approximately six to eight, eight million dollars. So you, it gives you an idea of the type of reinvestment that has had to be been made back into the property to get us back to where we are today. For the staff who've been living in doubt these past few months, this means their jobs are secure. We feel uh, great and we are thankful that uh, we open and today is our first day and we already seen Lots of guests coming in. To be honest, really excited that I'm back at work and after three months of... I feel proud and I feel happy to see all the guests back. Uh, it's been a long time missing them. If anything, the opening of Castaway Island Resort is symbolic of how resilient the tourism industry is. When you look around, the gardens all look the same, but if you look up, you, you notice, oh, I see a bit of sky now, whereas it was a bit, you know, more trees. But it doesn't take anything away from what Castaway is. Guests and staff celebrated another significant day for tourism, with the island expected to be fully booked for the next few months. Christopher Chand, FBC News.
And Chris now joins us live from the West Office. Chris, you've said the resort is likely to be booked out. Does that mean tourists have been waiting for Castaway Island to reopen? The island received its first group of guests for the year yesterday. The hotel expects occupancy to be around 90%. And for the next six months, we spoke to a couple of tourists on the island who said that they couldn't wait for Castaway Island to open. Thanks so much for that, Christopher. And Fiji National University has taken over a program which was facing closure. The Pacific Association of Technical and Vocational Educational Training, or PATVIT, was hosted by the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. It was designed to help school dropouts, and until this morning, its future was in doubt. Vusito Kote Wasawasa has the details. PetVet has been running since 2001, helping Pacific Island youth learn trade skills. Statistics show that 90% of Pacific Islanders end up unemployed with no skills to sustain themselves. The handover by the SPC to Fiji National University has been seen as a timely boost for the organization. In the review last year by an independent uh, team of experts, PathVet was one of the programs that they highlighted the importance of, but also highlighted the fact that we are not a trading institution, and for PathVet to move further into the future, it needs to be hosted in an institution that shares the same vision, that provides that kind of training. While officiating at the handover today, Labor Minister Chone Usumate said Fiji National University will need to address three key challenges. The first challenge will be to be seen as a real advocate of TVET in the region. PETVET, in order to be able to hold its head high, it will need to be seen as an irrelevant organization. Not just a social club where people come and drink tea and pass comments, but it needs to be something that is relevant, that it has an impact on all of the national states that we have in the Pacific. Meanwhile, FNU Vice Chancellor Dr. Ganesh Chan says it's nothing new because FNU has been working with government in implementing the Sustainable Livelihoods Project, very similar to PetVet. Education is about everybody. It's more particularly about the unempowered because that is the focus for education. PetVet will focus on informal sector training of students to enable them to fulfill their basic needs in life. Vusita Kotimwaswasa, FBC News. The United Front for a Democratic Fiji, or UFDF, will be holding public meetings on the draft constitution. The informal group formed from proposed political parties has issued a joint statement. In that statement, Ratuchone Kumbombola, Mahendra Chaudhry, Mick Beddoes, Atar Singh and Raman Pratap Singh all have rejected the government's draft constitution. The UFDF says it's concerned with restrictions in the proposed Bill of Rights, which impose a certain prohibitions. The statement further claims that there is an absence of land and tenancy rights, as well as the recognition of women and minority communities. The first meeting will take place in Suva tomorrow afternoon. Another public meeting is planned for Nandi on Friday. Fiji needs to do a lot more to care for children diagnosed with autism. While the number of autistic people in Fiji isn't that high, there's been no effort to introduce special care for them. Ritika Pratap reports. Autism is a physical condition linked to abnormal biology and chemistry in the brain. It's not a mental illness. Some of them socially, they don't uh, mix well in a crowded place. They like to be on their own. And uh, you'll find if... Uh, the, you have a gathering such as uh, the one we did here. You'll find a lot of children uh, walking off on their own. They prefer their own company. The exact cause of these abnormalities remain unknown, despite the best research in the world. An autistic person needs step-by-step -step monitoring, a structured program from when they wake up until they go off to sleep. If their day is disrupted anyhow, uh, you'll find that they uh, get very upset because that order has been disrupted. The Silver Special School held a small event this morning in recognition of World Autism Day with the theme Light It Up Blue. There are 13 students here who are autistic and the celebration this morning was more or less a show of solidarity. Now yet to uh, do up a room 
where it would uh, really cater for a child with autism, a classroom. Uh, as you can see, our classes are mainstream classroom set up. Eh? The school is working on a support group where parents can share their experiences and be better informed on how to behave with their children. Pritika Pratap, FBC News. The Northern Development Program was set up five years ago to boost the northern economy and stop urban drift to Viti Levu. Since then, over 1,500 projects worth $9.8 million have been approved. As Roland Karoy reports, the program is meeting its objectives. Boosting the northern economy and retaining people are the key objectives of the Northern Development Program. The man leading the government efforts believe they've done just that. The NDP has directly and indirectly provided 4,300 uh, employment. These are mostly informal employment. And this is about 9% of uh, employment in Bonolio. So to me, the, the, the program has, has really meeting its objectives of providing employment, providing livelihood. The NDP covers the whole of Bonolio, and according to Twindama, the 1,500 projects are spread out equally. Through its last five years, we were able to, you know, to provide livelihood to about 22,000 people of Wanoliwu. That's about 19% uh, of the people in Wanoliwu has somewhat uh, been uh, assisted by, by this program. The most common projects under the NDP are Ndalo and Yangona farming with plans for livestock farming. We're trying to get uh, involved in dairying. We know the north uh, has reached uh, good pasture land, good uh, livestock uh, grazing land. And we have tried to encourage uh, new farmers to venture into, into beef and uh, dairy here, and especially in Bua and Reketi areas. Uh, these are new areas that we want to focus this year. Since 2008, the program has funded fishing and poultry projects while also assisting cane farmers. Roland Karoy, FBC News. We've reached that time again. Jamie's up next. And what's this about athletics Fiji in need of cash? Well, it's a big race leading up to the Pacific Mini Games. The team needs to come up with its levy or make some tough choices. Also in sports tonight, young powerlifters to challenge the veterans in the upcoming PG Games. Stay with us. Oh. <laughs> Nimbula, why are you Mr. Ben? And Lamba! Now, Maggie Kirom and all the kids are going to be money ticket of a rumbuka. And a Bula FM! Now, we're going to do a shilling! Sad Din Kishurwat, KJ, Subhaka Mangal Prabhat, Abko Shibho. Subha Subha Ho Kushioka Mila, Na Logo Ki Parva, Na Dunia Kachamila, Panchioka Sangit Ho, or Mosam Alvila, Mubarak Ho Abko, Yekup Surat Sabira. हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह 6 से लेकर 9 बजे तक शामिल रहें रेडियो फिजी टू पर हम सफर में रविन सिंह के साथ वेलकम बैक यू विद एफबीसी स्पोर्ट्स फर्स्ट अप टुनाइट एथलेटिक्स फिजी इज होपिंग इट्स एबल टू कलेक्ट इट्स लेवी इन टाइम फॉर द पैसिफिक मिनी गेम्स विद द गेम्स इन वॉलेस एंड फतुना ड्रोइंग नियरा Athletics Fiji is still in the race with other sporting bodies to get the much-needed funds to participate. Selvin Chan has the details. Athletics Fiji is hoping to take a 34-member squad, which includes athletes with disabilities. The first sports to get their funding to Fesanok get first priority for the Pacific Mini Games. And the other members of the, of the team are doing as much as they can. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, so is everybody else. You know, it just seems like every sporting organization in Fiji is collecting money and, and you know, ultimately it's going to be, you know, very difficult. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's some solutions to, to the problems that, you know, that we're facing or the difficulties. Athletics Fiji has also considered the worst case scenario, taking a smaller contingent. So from there, you know, you... I mean, you can always easily reduce it to to 10, 15, or whatever, you know, in total. Eh? And uh, overall, you have to reduce the number of officials, you know. Well, that's probably one one case scenario that you know that that's a possibility. Uh, so you know, even then, if you take 20 athletes, you still have to raise 20 thousand dollars, you know. Uh, so either way, it's going to be very difficult. If 
Athletics Fiji does have to reduce the team size, it will be the smallest athletics team ever to any regional meet. Well, it, it could be, yes, because we've, we've always prided ourselves in, in you know, uh, taking one of the biggest teams uh, in every game. Uh, it's just the nature of our sport. You know, we've got a lot of individual events and, and relays. Each athlete needs to collect $1,000. And with a 34-member team, Athletics Fiji has its work cut out. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association's National League Board will finalize the second leg of the Fiji Sun GP batteries this weekend. The Sunday meeting will decide which eight teams will play in the Fiji Fact. Shelvin Chan reports. Right now, Tavua and Savu Savu look to be the two teams who will miss out on the first two tournament of the year. Both the associations are facing problems, but according to Fiji FA, there is good news for at least one of them. I think uh, as far as Tabua is concerned, our national president, Mr. Rajesh Patel, has already informed the interim president uh, to call the annual general meeting of Tabua Football Association. And very shortly, we are going to have elected officials in Tabua. The meeting this weekend will involve football associations from all over Fiji. We are going to have a meeting in Suva, whereby all the super premier districts are going to come and we'll uh, let them know the second round fixtures and uh, we'll outline the first round games, uh, how it was played. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we, we were very fortunate that there was no protest in the first round. Even though it may seem a foregone conclusion, the final decision will be made after next weekend. And uh, on 14th, we are going to complete the first round. And as promised, we are going to have the Battle of the uh, I mean, the Fiji Fact uh, winner declared. Those, those eight teams that are going to take part in the Fiji Fact, uh, Vodafone Fiji Fact, uh, that will be declared. There will be no Super Premier League matches played this weekend as the Fiji FA allow players to rest after religious tournaments over the Easter weekend. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. Powerlifting Fiji's build-up to the Commonwealth Championship starts with the Fiji Games. The association believes the Games will be a test for both experienced and new lifters. Up and coming, young powerlifters will go head-to-head -head against their mentors in the Fiji Games next month. Uh, for the Fiji Games, it's uh, competed as an open category, like uh, other Pacific Games and Oceanians who will uh, host the Fiji Games as an open category. Irava says while experience matters, there have been occasions where young lifters have stepped up to the plate and proven their worth. Uh, may not be better, but uh, if they train smart, and give quality training, I'm sure they can come up to the whole load. The Fiji Games is special to powerlifting Fiji, as this will also be the first event of the sport in 2013. Fiji Games and then we have the Nationals. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, world Championships, but the major one that we are eyeing is the uh, Commonwealth Oceania Championship, which is in Monaco, Auckland, towards the end of the year. Powerlifters will then line up for the Nationals, where the association is hoping to select medal contenders for the Commonwealth Championship. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now for business. Expect a drop in the price of internet broadband service soon. The Commerce Commission today started a study of the wholesale price of broadband services in Fiji. Devna Ryan has more. The retail price of voice and data transfers through broadband aren't regulated. However, once the wholesale price is examined, the Commerce Commission believes that consumers will be paying less. The retail price of both voice and data is not regulated. However, the wholesale price is. Dr. Reddy confirms their determinations will also have a positive impact on large industries and tertiary institutions which are highly dependent on the internet. Uh, this will in particularly uh, have an impact on uh, large institutions, for example, the tertiary institutions, the universities, who purchase data on a wholesale basis. And of course, it will 
uh, you know, uh, impact the retail side as well because if the wholesale rates goes down then the retail rate is also expected to go down. The Commission will also do a survey on the price and volume of data offered to an average consumer. Dev Narayan, FBC News. And with that, let's join Genevieve. Thanks, Jackie. We had beautiful weather today with only a few brief showers in Suva and Savasavu. But then again, it rains in these two places practically every day. So what can you do? It's worth noting that exactly a year ago today, we had heavy flooding in the Western Division. Warm temperatures all around with Lombasa posting a high of 33 degrees today. Most other places were in the low 30s. And what joy! Fine conditions for tomorrow apart from afternoon showers in Lombasa and Savusavu. Touch wood, these fantastic conditions in days to come should be a relief from all that rain we've had recently. And finally, for Thursday, there'll be brief showers over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands. And as usual, it's going to be fine apart from afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. That's weather. We've got some awesome shows lined up for you this evening, so stay tuned. Bye for now. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And a quick look at the top stories. Owners of MV Sandy refuse to service La and Rotuma until they are paid government subsidies. Leptospirosis cases in the North concern Health Ministry and more than $9 million spent on Northern Development Program. Time for the opinion poll. Are authorities doing enough to prevent burglaries around the country? You can take part in the poll on our FBC website where you can also watch the videos of our nightly news bulletin. That's all from the newsroom tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow evening. Until then, Nisa Modi.